This is one of the most important things that I feel God ever showed me. And it's a balance between what is God's part and what is our part. What is it that God does and what do we do? This is where people miss it. They know that God can heal, but am I just supposed to pray and then wait on God? Or is there something that I can do? And this is where a lot of people are missing it is because they are waiting on God to do what he told them to do. And then there's a lot of us that have taken responsibility for doing things that only God is supposed to do. You've got to have a clear idea. What is God's part? What is our part? Look at this in Ephesians chapter 2. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Next verse says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. You are saved by grace through faith. You're saved by a combination of those two, not one or the other. And most of the body of Christ is divided into different groups. And you have the grace group that preaches it's just up to God. It's totally the grace of God, whatever God's will is. It's just up to God, whatever God... See, that's a, an extreme grace that everything is just totally up to God and He controls it and we don't have anything to do with it. That's not true. That is not true. But on the other hand, there is another segment of the body of Christ that it's all up to us. And so what they do is fast and pray and bombard heaven and they will intercede. And they'll, if they don't get their answer, they'll get a prayer chain going and they'll put pressure on God. And they'll get a hundred or a thousand people to twist God's arm and we're not going to let go until God comes out. And they are going to make God move. That's usually called the faith group. And so we have the grace group and we have the faith group and the faith group are over there saying, man, you're just saying whatever will be, will be. And that's wrong. And then the grace group's over there. You're trying to manipulate God and you think it's all your power. What is the proper response? Notice that the scripture says you're saved by grace through faith. You're saved by the combination. If you take grace by itself and only emphasize grace, it'll kill you. If you take faith by itself and only emphasize faith, it will kill you. You aren't saved by grace. You aren't saved by faith. You're saved by grace through faith. It's the combination of the two. It's very similar to sodium and chloride. Did you know that sodium and chloride are both poisons? If you take enough sodium, it'll kill you. If you take enough chloride, it'll kill you. They're poisons. But if you mix them together, it becomes salt and you'll die without it. Grace by itself will kill you if you don't balance it with the right degree of faith. Faith by itself will kill you if you don't balance it with grace. You've got to mix the two together. It has, you're saved by grace through faith. Grace is God's part. Faith is your part. Let me give you some definitions. The word grace, and this is my own personal definition, it's basically everything that God is and everything that God has that is available to you completely independent of you. It doesn't have anything to do with you. It has everything to do with God. And if you have to do anything to be worthy of grace, then it's not grace. It's not grace if it demands your performance. Grace is something God did for you, independent of you, before you were ever born. And the truth is that every person who has ever breathed on this planet since the crucifixion of Jesus had their sins paid for. It says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 2, that He, speaking of Jesus, is the propitiation. That means the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus didn't only die for Christians. He died for the ungodly. The ungodly sins have been paid for. They just haven't accepted the payment. But the sins of the whole world have been paid for, but that doesn't mean people are saved because grace has provided salvation, but you aren't saved by grace alone. You're saved by grace through faith. Faith is your positive response to what God has done. And if there isn't a response of faith over here, then God's grace alone doesn't save you. It says in Titus chapter 2 verse 11 that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Grace has already dealt with sin. The only issue is now, are you going to put faith in what God has done by grace? 
God has already provided healing for you. By His stripes we were healed, 1 Peter 2, 24. It didn't say that if you'll believe, God will heal you. No, by His stripes you've already been healed. Healing has already been provided. It's a grace thing. And if you understand this, then how is God not going to give you what He's already given you? He's already done it. See, this is the reason it's so easy to get born again. Because salvation is presented as something that's already been accomplished. Your sins have already been paid for. And now, whoever will may come. And if a person says, but you don't know how bad I am. We just keep telling people, no, your sins have already been forgiven. It's just a matter of whether you'll believe and receive or doubt and do without. But God's already provided it. How can you doubt that God will give you something that He's already done? And since salvation is presented, that grace is already over. It's already complete. It's a done deal. Your salvation is there. Now, are you going to receive it? Or are you going to reject it because you don't believe God? See, this is the reason it's so easy to get saved because you are putting faith in God's grace, not faith in you. You are believing that God, you've already done this. I'm going to believe what you did. But then after you get born again, you know what most Christians do? They quit putting faith in what God did for them and they start saying, oh, now I've got to live holy and if I'll pray and if I'll study the Word and if I'll go to church and if I'll pay my tithes and if I'll do this, this, and this, then I can make God do this. That's not how you got saved. You didn't do something to make Jesus save you. You heard the good news that He already loved the world. He already paid for your sins. He already had done it and you responded to God's grace. But then, after we get saved, religion has taught us now God is going to respond to you, how holy you are. And you've got to live holy, and unless you fast and pray and do this and this and this, God won't bless you. And most Christians believe that faith is something we do to make God move. We have these statements about faith moves God. I want you to know faith doesn't move God. God's not the one that needs to move. God's not stuck. (laughs) Faith only appropriates what God has already provided by grace. If God hasn't already provided it, your faith can't make it happen. You can't make God do anything. You can't move God. If God hadn't already moved and provided it, your faith can't make it happen. Faith doesn't make God do anything. Faith only reaches out and appropriates what God has already provided. He's already forgiven your sins. He's already healed your body. He's already commanded prosperity upon you. Before you ever had a problem, God had made the supply. Jesus only died one time 2,000 years ago, and now He's seated at the right hand of God the Father. He's not taking stripes on His back. He's not healing people today. He's already provided healing. He bore the sins, the sickness, the disease of the whole world 2,000 years ago, and it's already a done deal. Jesus doesn't have to move to heal you. He's already healed, and He placed this supernatural raising from the dead power on the inside of us. The way you get healed today isn't by doing something and then God rewards you with healing. No. Well, the way you get healed is by finding out that by His stripes I was healed. It's already done. And all you do is just respond positively to what God has already done. Now, if you understood that, Then when your enemy, the devil, who's the accuser of the brethren, comes to you and begins to say, you hadn't fasted enough, you hadn't prayed, what makes you think you're worthy? You'd immediately say, well, it doesn't have anything to do with my worthiness. God, by grace, has already provided it. And it's just a matter of either me believe and receive or doubt and do without. I'm just going to believe and receive. It's already done, so I'll just take advantage of it. And Satan can't corner you. Satan can't condemn you. But the vast majority of Christians, see, think faith is something you do to move God. Pastor Bobby, I think, has prayed and seen people raised from the dead. When you say something like that, people think, oh, man, you must be holy. I wonder what you did to get that kind of power and anointing. Did you know every person in here, the Lord gave you a command to go heal the sick, cleanse the leper, and raise the dead. Every one of you have raising from the dead power on the inside of you. These men aren't holier than the rest of it. I can guarantee you, Pastor Dean's not holier than anybody here. It's not his holiness that makes this worse. 
every one of us have raising from the dead power. Some people have learned that it's not based on our goodness and we just receive it and we take our authority and speak in faith about what Jesus did. Other people out here are thinking, oh, I could never see a person raised from the dead because I haven't prayed enough and I know I'm not studying the word and I'm not holy enough. And it's your unbelief and the fact that your faith is in you and not in God's grace that is hindering you. You haven't learned the good news that faith doesn't move God. God moved before you existed. God's already provided everything. You don't need, God's not surprised by anything that's going on in your life. He doesn't have to go do something new to get you set free. Before you ever had a problem, God had already created the supply. His grace provided everything before you ever had a problem. You don't, God's not going to respond to you. You have to learn to respond to Him. That's what faith is. Faith is your positive response to what God has already done. 